Hey friends, happy Pilates day. I'm super excited. You don't need anything today, just your body. So we're gonna use our body weight to really work hard today. So go ahead and find yourself on the mat standing up and let's get busy. All right, we're gonna start with our feet wide today. My toes are gonna to be out, heels are gonna come in and I'm gonna bring my arms out just to immediately start working a little bit harder. We're gonna go down and up. Now be careful that you're not leaning forward like that, but you're sliding down as if you're trying to go against that back wall. And we're gonna keep going. We got 10 of these. Really gonna heat up the legs right out of the gate today. Perfect. Nine, eight more. My pinkies are up and that's forcing my triceps to kind of start even to work just a little bit. Four more, three more, two more. Last one, and now come down about halfway. We're gonna pulse here, tiny little pulses, super small, so we're really starting to fire up the inner thighs. And the arms are gonna to start to feel as though they're heavy because we're just holding them in this static hold. We got five more tiny pulses, four, three, two, last one, rise up. Feel the heat, feel the burn, it's awesome. Let's go ahead and slide down about halfway. We're gonna bring our arms to a bent position. I'm gonna flip my fingers up towards the ceiling. So I have this really blousy shirt on today, but my arms are bent 90 degrees, just like that. Perfect, now watch. I'm gonna pull my arms down, almost tap them on my ribs and pull them back up. Almost as if I'm cranking a machine here, but I want you to focus on the upper back. See if you can flex back there. We have eight. Maybe go lower in your legs, you pick. Just the warm up here, so we got lots to do. Here's six, five, fingers are spread wide, four more, three more, perfect, two more. Now watch, hold here, we're gonna pulse tiny, little. Legs are static now, so we're gonna alternate quite a bit between upper body being movement and lower body being still, and then switching. Perfect, five, four, three, two, last one, rise up. Give a quick wiggle to your legs. Now watch this, we're gonna come back down. We're gonna change the foot shape. I'm not gonna change my left foot because my ankle is still very much healing. I don't have my brace on today, but don't be fooled. It's still somewhat of a mess. Slide on down. My right heel is going to lift. My right arm is going to stay out. I'm going to do nothing here with my left side. Let's start to pulse. So right arm is still, right leg is doing the work. Beautiful. We have 10, nine, eight, seven more, six more, five, four, three, two. Now watch this. We're going to drop and lengthen, drop, lengthen. So my heel is still up down there and that's creating this calf work. That's really nice. Go long. Five, length, four, length, three, length, two. Perfect. We're going to do the other side now. So get a wiggle between. I won't be doing my heel. So if you have an injury, you can always modify it. So go ahead and come down. Left arm's gonna go out and that's gonna be that static hold. Your left heel will lift and then we're gonna pulse. So I'm gonna do it with a flat foot. You can do it with your heel up. You pick, it's your body. Beautiful. Five, four, three, two. Let's make that big movement. We drop, we lengthen. Remember, lengthen. Think about the muscle climbing up into that hip. So we squeeze the backside as well as engage the quad. Five, uh-huh, four, three, two, last one, and give a little wiggle. Go ahead and roll your hips around. We're gonna bring our feet in for a moment. I'm just gonna have my legs crossed. This is gonna work a little bit of my balance and force my feet to do some of the work here. If you know that your balance is a little bit wonky and you don't wanna take that chance of tipping over, you don't have anything close by, go ahead and just bring your feet together and that creates a little bit more solid base. It's totally up to you. Arms are gonna come out and my elbows are bent like I have a big 
flour sack there, something really heavy. My fingers are gonna point out towards the edges of my room and I'm gonna pull and pull. So it's like a machine kind of taking my fingers away from me and pulling them in. So when I do this, my legs are still, but I'm having to squeeze my buns and squeeze my legs together so that I don't wobble and that I don't fall over. Nice, we have 10, nine, like you're just poking a hole, eight, seven, six, five, four more, three more, two more, last one, arms down. Now, of course, you can always use light weights, but I encourage you to switch it up. Don't always use weights because we're constantly adjusting our body and we don't necessarily need the weights if we're having perfect form and deliberate movements. Remember, Pilates is, is all about controlled movements. It's not about heavy lifting and using momentum. It's very much control. So go ahead and switch your feet. If you're working your balance like me, trying to get my foot to sort of wake up again from surgery, the, the muscles underneath my foot don't necessarily want to do any work. So part of my rehab is to do this. And I thought as I'm doing it, what an amazing engagement from my inner thigh up through my pelvic floor into my belly. So I wanted to share that with you again arms come out in that W, but I want you to imagine that you have something heavy here. Like you're not just flopping your arms, like you're holding something. The shoulders nestle down the back and we pull and we retract, pull and retract. 10, beautiful. Nine, there's no momentum. This is all controlled movements. Eight, pull, seven, pull, six, beautiful five, four, three, two, last one, arms down. We're gonna come back to more balance work here. So in that position, my feet were sort of like this, sort of like little duck feet. Now I'm going to put my feet parallel, one in front of the other, and you can see that it's much harder. For this one to help support myself so that I don't wobble over, my arms are gonna go out and that immediately helps my center of gravity. My pinkies are up, it might be hard to see with all the beautiful colors behind me. My pinkies are up, my arms are long, my heart is towards you, and I'm just holding here. So I'm forcing my legs to do a lot of work. Once I find my stability, let's work the arms. Here we go, 10, down nine, down, eight, beautiful, seven, six, feel the length here, five, can you grow taller, four, three, legs are shaken, two, we're gonna do 10 more here. Make your legs do some of the work, squeeze your inner thighs, squeeze your buns, squeeze your feet muscles even, six, five, four, three, Two, final one, arms down. Let's switch those feet parallel. See if you can be on that balance beam. And you're gonna notice like one foot is gonna be your dominant foot. You can tell this one's hard for me because my left foot does not want to be stable. So pinkies are gonna go up again. My palms are to the back. Once I find my stability and my legs are engaged, I'm gonna push and pull. Push to the back, pull to the front, push. Pull, 10, really work your chest here. Nine, eight, seven, six more, five, uh -huh. four, three, two, last one, arms come down, beautiful. Now think about the zipper line that you've made from your toes all the way up through the pelvic floor to your throat and into your head, it's beautiful. All right, so this one's gonna be a little bit tricky to demonstrate because it is gonna hurt my foot. I gave it a trial run earlier. So I'm gonna get you into it and then I'll probably just talk you through it. So my left toes are gonna be in that corner and my right foot is going to come behind me. So I'm gonna just warm up a little bit with some curtsies. I'm not gonna turn my left toes out too much because that's gonna put pressure on that joint, but I'm gonna bend and lift, bend and lift. So my right knee is dropping. I am simply sliding down that back wall. I'm not leaning forward, I'm just coming into a curtsy. Arms can be wherever you'd like them. If you feel unstable, separate your feet just a little bit. This is really hard for me today. 
And so I'm just going to be splaying my arms everywhere to help my balance. All right, we have five, four. I actually find when my legs are in a line, the balance is better. Three, two. Now we're going to do one more and stay low. So we're in this bent knee position. Both knees are bent, but their hips are turned outward. So we're open, toes are out. This is really gonna fire up that right quad. And we're gonna drop for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, super small, five, four, three, two, hold, rise up. Now here's where it's gonna get a little bit crazy. Listen to your body. If you feel like this is too much, just stay with those curtsy pulses. And I'm gonna try a few, but I may come back to the curtsy pulses, but I'll guide you on what we're gonna do. So same setup, toes are out, left in front, right behind. I'm gonna drop and lift, drop and lift. Drop into the curtsy, lift through the hip. Drop, lift, drop lift arms can be where you need them to be you have 10 of these lift nine lift eight lift keep going seven lift if it's too much stay with the pulses five lift four lift three lift two lift last one and rise up zip up your zipper let's try the other side so again, depending on your feet and your body as a whole, that may not work for you. So I'm gonna give you the option to come into the pulses. This time, our right toes are in front, our left toes are behind, and we're gonna pulse. Now this is really hard for me. So I'm not gonna do this one, but I'm gonna get you set up into it. So here's your curtsy, yeah? The left heel is up. I want you to pulse small for 10. I'm gonna do baby ones, nine, eight, seven pull up your pelvic floor lift up and in like you're doing a kegel and that's going to engage the belly here five four three two and rise up give a quick little wiggle do what you need and now we're going to come into those lifts now i know i'm not going to be able to do the lifts on this side so same setup you're going to find that curtsy and you're going to drop and lift drop and lift. See how I'm modifying my right legs getting the work. I'm working my balance, but I'm not coming into that curtsy. You do what you need. We have five, four, three more, two more. Last one. Beautiful. Come on up. We're going to come back to the wide stance. And this is another one that may be challenging for you. It definitely is going to be challenging for me. But I wanted to give you some, some old stuff that we haven't done in a while because of my injury. I've avoided some of these movements. So I thought that's really not fair to you because I'm broken. So I'm going to try to give you what I got. Toes are out, heels are in. Arms are going to come out. I'm going to show you with my left foot. We're going to start with the left. Usually we start with the right, but today I'm going to show you with the left because I know that this side can do it. So I'm going to drop and I'm going to lift. Drop, lift, drop, point. Now I'm not swinging. I'm using my oblique here to pull, pull. Beautiful. Not kicking, pulling. So think about that. We squat, we lift, we squat, we lift. Keep going. 10 of those, lift, squat, lift. I'm gonna do baby ones and that's perfect. Squat, lift, squat, lift. Let's do seven, lift, six, lift, five, lift, four, beautiful, three more. Two more. Now watch this. You're going to hold at the top. Hold at the top. Right leg is straight. Left leg is straight. Arms. I like to bring my arms towards my heart. That helps keep my center of gravity where it needs to be. I'm going to pulse for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Let's do the other side. So shake it out. You should have felt both legs there. All right. If you prefer to have a little shorter squat, the way that I modified, that's perfect. 
Here we go. We're going to squat and lift. Squat. Now, I could never come into a wide squat here because it's too much on that ankle joint. Lift. And even that's too much. Squat. Lift. Squat. Lift. Eight more. See if you can control it. Point your pretty toe here. Seven. Lift. Heart is towards me. And you're using your oblique muscles to pull. Five. Pull. Four. Pull. Three. Pull. Two more. Nice. Beautiful. Go ahead and stand tall. Give yourself a little bit of a wiggle here. Take a stretch. We haven't done much stretching. When we do these videos, I try to condense it into really the work portion of the class. I feel as though you can stretch, you can take my yoga class, my chair yoga class is incredibly stretchy and all of the videos are yours. So pick and choose, you know, come to Pilates and then maybe try a chair yoga class. I just had a conversation the other day about chair yoga and the concept or the idea, the perception that it's for only seniors or those with disabilities. And I challenge you to do a chair practice because it's my preference of how I like to practice. I feel like I get deep stretches. I feel as I'm more centered and controlled, my body responds better to the movement. So it's a nice way to stretch is my point. All right, left leg is gonna be strong like an ox. Spread those toes. We're gonna take our right knee and draw it up. This one's gonna be hard for me and open. Okay, I'm gonna grab a chair, hold on. I'm going to grab a chair. So a tool, right? My left leg just isn't ready. So I'm gonna open up my leg here. You can grab a tool as well. Right arm goes high. And this is gonna force the side body to do a lot of work. I'm gonna pull elbow and knee to touch. Pull, pull. If you're using a chair, barely, one finger. Get that leg to do the work. We have 10, nine, eight, seven, point your pretty, six, five, four, Three, two, last one, lower, get a little wiggle or a stretch. I like to bring my right leg behind and open up that hip flexor, take my right arm high. I'm gonna stay with the right leg for a moment. Right leg's gonna go out in front and it's gonna be long and straight. I'm gonna tap my toes onto the floor and go up and over and tap to the side. So I go front, side. Front, side, we have 10 of these. Up and over, it's almost as though you're going over a barrel or a ball. If it's too much, then you're just sweeping. Make sure you tap both directions. Five, front, four, front, beautiful. Three, two, hold it out here. Lift, tiny. 10, see if your heart can come to me. Nine, how's your left leg? Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and release. Give a little wiggle here, give a little stretch, do what you need. All right, so I don't know that I'm gonna need the chair, but I'm gonna go ahead and move it. So my right leg is gonna stand. This is my, my little Christmas tree out here. Left knee opens, left arm, Pull, release, pull, pull. So you can see this side, I don't need the chair. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, point your pretty. Two, it's hard for me to point. Last one and release. Left leg's gonna go in front. Remember, it's gonna have that nice long leg with a pointed toe. It's beautiful, yeah? With this long seam in our body and we go up and front. We tap, we come to front. So this tree back here has all the ornaments on it from when my children were kids. So you know those preschool glitter globs with glue and a dump of glitter and their little face. I got lots of them over here. And so I pulled out all of my kids' ornaments and I usually have the kid tree, I call it, in my family room. Two more. 
Nice, let's do one more. Hold it out to the side and lift tiny for 10, nine, eight. I tried, decided to bring it out into my studio this year for a couple reasons. It's pure joy for one. I love to see all their little faces and their glued messes on construction paper. Three, two, last one. Beautiful. We're going to come back to a curtsy move. And this is a really nice way to get into that pelvic floor. After this, we're going to be on the ground. So this tree typically is in my family room. Left toes here. Whoops. Right toes behind. Let's come into the curtsy. So my left foot is flat. My right heel is up. I'm going to take my pelvis and I'm going to tuck it under and release. I'll turn so you can see. So my left foot is in front, right's behind, watch my pelvis. I tuck, I release, I tuck. And so we're scooping, releasing. Picture your tailbone going under your back, under, back. You're gonna feel your right leg like crazy. Keep going. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, beautiful. Two more, hold here. So my pelvis is under, my tailbone is going underneath me towards that chair. Now I'm gonna pulse down for 10, small, nine, eight, seven, six, do you feel it? Five, four, three, two, last one and rise. So we're gonna do the other side and this is where I know that I won't be able to do it. So my right toes are gonna be here. My left toes are gonna be in the back and I'm gonna find that curtsy. My heel is up. So my ankle's in flexion, which is not good right now. So you know where to set up. Here's your feet, bend your knees, take your pelvis, tuck it under you. While you tuck, I'll tell you the story of the tree. So the story of the tree. So it's gonna have it in my family room like I always do. And it's lovely and it's cute and all the little ornaments that don't stay on the tree anymore. But I put it out here for a couple reasons. One, I wanted it to be festive and beautiful out here. And at night, it's super twinkly. You have five more. And, uh, but I decided this year I'm having a cookie party for each of my sons. And so I have the children's stockings over there hung up on the wall. I've got the tree. I've got tons of presents for the kids. Sawyer has her little um, John Deere ride along. Two more. And now pulse down for 10. Nine. So she has her John Deere with her cow and her chickens, lots of presents. And we're just gonna have the kids over and I'm making a ton of cookies and we're gonna have a little like afternoon hot chocolate cookie party because I realized trying to recreate the same holiday tradition and expect the same feeling is not gonna happen when it's very different. So I'm totally changing it up. We're gonna have a party out here. It'll be fun and festive and go ahead and rise up. So I encourage you to look at your traditions, which are really important, have a seat on the mat. But we also have to realize that this has been a very different year. Go ahead and bend your knees and sit over them. This is gonna stretch your shins, your calves. If it's too much on your knees, go ahead and sit. Just for a moment, we just get a stretch. Nice, now go ahead and sit to the side. We're gonna get a twist. It's just really a different year. And so I decided I'm gonna make everything different. And I'm making about eight different types of cookies. One more twist. Beautiful, come on around to the other side. And lots of candy. And here's the neat thing, twist to the left. My kids will have beautiful memories of the cookies that they had as children, because as soon as they all grew up, I stopped baking. And I'm going back to one more, to what they remember from their Christmas, which is these ornaments, lots of Santa Claus presents and cookies, lots of cookies. So it's gonna be a fun, festive um, Christmas this year. You're gonna have your feet together. I'm not gonna do that because I can't. So soles of your feet together, and this is gonna stretch the inner thighs but it's also gonna force us to work our core. So your feet are sealed together with your knees wide. We're gonna take our arms up. And a lot of us have a tendency when we sit, especially with our heels together like that, or feet together, we wanna lean back. Your work is to sit tall as you can. My hands are gonna be palm face down and I'm gonna draw a big circle and pause. And another one, eight, 
seven, just like you're tracing a basketball. Six, five, sit really tall. Four, three, two more. Last one now, pulse your arms up, up. 10, nine, eight, seven, sit tall, six, five, four, three, two, last one and release. Go ahead and bring your right hand down and tick tock your head, left hand comes down, tick tock your head, that just gives you a little stretch for your neck. So we're gonna do another set, but this time our palms are gonna be up, which is gonna work a different muscle in the arm. And we're going to circle and pause. That pause is critical. If we're just doing this, it's nice, but this is that controlled Pilates movement and it's deliberate action. And I think deliberate action can be practiced here, but it's really applied in our life. How deliberate are we in our actions? And if you practiced yoga with me last series, we talked about um, compassion and action. Like being compassionate is one thing, but taking action and choosing to give someone your time and your attention and your, your ear or helping your neighbor or anything. It doesn't have to cost anything. One more, hold, lift, lower, lift. It's not much, maybe three inches. It doesn't take much to be compassionate, but it, we need to go further than just feeling it. We need to take action and do something. Even if it's just sending somebody a message just to let them know you're thinking about them can really make a difference in their lives. Three, two, last one and release. Feel your arms, magic, feel your belly. All right, we're gonna go ahead and turn. I'm gonna turn this way. So you can see over in that back corner, it's kind of hard to see. I have a bike, a stationary bike, and then my Pilates reformers right there. And so I've been spending a lot of time on the Pilates reformer and it's really inspired me to be able to take those actions off of the reformer and onto the mat. So we're going to do a couple of those um, motions that I really love on the reformer. And then um, I love the bike too. And that's been a great um, rehab for me since I'm not able to walk very far yet. All right, go ahead and come on down. Bring your knees into your chest. Just get a squeeze first. Beautiful. Now come to a bent knee and sink your belly into the ground. Sometimes we want to be neutral here, but I want you to imprint and that forces the ribs and the hips to kind of crunch together. Now my arms are going to go up, straight up, palms towards my feet. Beautiful. Now I'm going to use the power of my mind and the control of my body to make this a challenge. We're going to start with our arms. I'm going to lower my arms like a lever, pause, and now retract up to start. I'm going to lower, pause, retract. It doesn't seem like much, but if you're pointing your fingers long, and your arms are long and lean and your belly is down and your legs are stationary. This can become very powerful. We have five, retract it. Tighten up the muscles in the arms. Three, beautiful. Two, last one, fingers go up. Now we're gonna do something with the legs. My legs are bent, I'm gonna straighten and retract, straighten, retract, arms stay up, straighten, retract, like a diagonal line, pull in, straighten, in, eight, pull, seven, pull, six, pull, five, four, the lower your legs, the harder it is, but make sure your spine stays connected, three, Two, last one, rest everything. We're gonna combine those two motions. It's cool. Legs start like this. Ready, everything lengthens, retracts. Lengthen, retract. 10, belly down. Nine, think length here. Seven, six, Five, 
four, we're gonna add something at the end. Three, two, do one more and keep everything long. Take a breath in, lift your chin, look at your belly, pump your arms, not fast, not fast. You know, I'm not a fast girl. 10, nine, eight, lift your shoulder blades off the mat. Seven, six, five, four, three, go higher. We have 10 more. 10, nine, straighten your legs, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and release. Not bad, eh? So I do that on my reformer quite a bit. We're gonna rest our head. Arms are gonna stay down just for a moment. Legs are gonna go up. And so when you work a reformer, you have straps on your feet. And we're gonna mimic that. Belly is down. I'm gonna have my arms down today. If you want, you can have your arms up, it's up to you. So I'm gonna open my legs wide, draw a circle, scoop and pull. Open, lower, scoop and pull. 10, scoop and pull. Nine, scoop and pull. Here's eight. Do you feel that? I have my hands on my belly just so that I make sure my belly does not lift. Seven, scoop and pull. You can see it's really hard for me to keep my legs straight today. I'm extra tight, scoop and pull. Listen to your body, I'm still working. I'd love to be straighter, but I'm just really tight today. Three more. Beautiful. Two. I've learned so much grace the last two months. Two months, bring your knees in, open your hips, get a stretch. So we're gonna reverse that direction. Legs go up. They're straight-ish, toes are pointed. It's so interesting to me having this ankle surgery, I cannot point my toes hard into a point anymore. It just, that's part of the, the rehab is getting my foot to listen to my brain saying point, I can't point. It just, just sort of is there. It's really interesting to me. All right, so we're gonna reverse that. We opened and scooped. Now we're gonna lower, scoop around and pause. Lower, scoop, and pause. This one's hard. Eight, seven. Bend your knees if you need to. Six, it's fine to bend your knees. Remember, the longer the lever, the harder it is. For me, I had a really hard workout yesterday. I'm gonna stick with the bent knees. Lower, open, lower, open. Just do two more. Perfect, last one. And go ahead and lower your feet to the mat and let your knees open and get a stretch. So a lot of quad work today, hip work and belly work. I'm hoping you're feeling this incredible belly work. Beautiful, bring your knees into your chest. Let them open just a little bit. Last week was a lot of uh, backside work. So we're just gonna focus a lot on the legs. So legs are gonna go up and remember, it can be relative. If you want your knees to be bent, that's fine too. Just make sure your knees are right over your hips and that you're not coming in like that because then you're not gonna get the benefit of the belly. So the legs are gonna go up, toes are gonna point hard if you can, and you're gonna draw a small circle and pause. And pause. If it's too much, bend your knees, draw a circle, pause. Pause. Lots of ways to go. So if your knees are bent, your knees are circling, not your feet. We're really feeling inner thighs, groin, and hip here. We have five, four, three, two. We're gonna reverse for eight. Circle, small pause. Here's seven, six, five, four, three, Two, last one, lower the feet. Let's get a zigzag twist. Sometimes we can have a lot of tension that builds up in the hip flexors. So this uh, zigzag sort of windshield wiper twist is a really nice opening here for the pelvis and the front part of the hip. Come back up to center and then drop to the other side. Beautiful. All right, come back up. 
Legs are gonna go to that 90 degree bend. Heels are gonna to come together. I'm gonna to keep my hands on my belly to remind myself to sink my belly down. Open my knees like a butterfly, feet stay touching. Close, inner thigh work, 10. It's like a clam, nine, squeeze, eight, squeeze, seven more, six more, five, four, three, two, last one, and lower. Beautiful. We're gonna go ahead and roll on up. And then we're gonna come onto our push-up position. Knees or toes, you're gonna pick. We're gonna do some, some push-ups here and some planks. And I know it's so not many of our favorites. It's certainly not my favorite, but it's nice to get arms, chest, and core all in one movement. So fingers spread nice and wide. We create a solid, Solid base here. And if you choose to be on your knees, I want you to scoot your knees back and then come onto the top part of the knee where it attaches to the quadricep. And I actually prefer these, this style of push-up to toe push-up. And I certainly couldn't do the toe push-up at this point because of my ankle. So my belly's going to draw in. And then I want you to take your eyes to the top edge of your mat. So they're not looking forward because that's going to compress the cervical spine. Your head's not hanging down because that puts pressure in your neck and in your shoulders. Eyes are towards the top edge of your mat and the elbows are gonna, are gonna shave the side body. So we're not doing a traditional push-up where the elbows go out like a man push-up. We're gonna do a Pilates push-up with the elbows shaving the ribs. So find your setup, knees or toes, tops of the knees. Toes are up if you're in the knee position. So we're gonna bend halfway, shave the body, Press up. So this is tricep push ups. 10, press. 9, press. 8, press. 7, make it small and tight. 5, 4, 3, 2, last one, and press up. Take a puppy pose. We call it the hips are high, the forehead comes down. We get a stretch through the back and to the shoulders. Do you feel that? All right, well, let's go ahead and come up and we're gonna do a traditional push-up. So the hands are gonna go a little bit wider. You're gonna find the knees again. This time the elbows can bend outward just a little bit, not too much. Don't do too much external rotation. Here we go. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five more, four, three, two, and find that puppy pose, head down, hips up, stretch. Beautiful. Let's hold a plank here. Come on to the top of the knee or the toes. Eyes are down towards the top edge of your mat. Belly draws in and we're gonna hold here and we're gonna breathe together. Take a breath in. Breath out. Breath in. Breath out. Breath in. Breath out. Let's do five more. Breath in. Breath out. Here's four. Here's three. Here's two. Last one. And puppy pose. And go ahead and come up and bring your left foot forward between your hands. And then push yourself up into this low lunge. We're gonna stretch the quad and the hip. Press your right hip down towards the mat just a little bit. Not too much, we never wanna overstretch. And then take your right arm up, rest your left arm on your left leg. Get a side bend so you feel that beautiful opening through the side body. 
Nice, let's switch. Right foot comes forward. Hands come to the right thigh just for support. And then we do a slight press forward of the left hip. Left arm goes up and over. And we feel that beautiful stretch. Go ahead and come on down. Find yourself just sitting on the floor. Each week is just a little bit different. And it's so fun to share with you my practice, my healing, my, my journey to recovery. It's been really hard, really hard. And I appreciate so much all of the support and the messages and the incredible generosity of each of you. I couldn't have made it through this year without your generosity, truly. March 7th was the last day that I taught in person um, other than my summer classes in the park. And so I have relied on your donations and working really hard, getting contracts in the community at rehab centers, um, all virtual. So I appreciate you. I love sharing my life with you and I love being a part of your life. So thank you for the messages. Thanks for reaching out to me and saying hi. It's, it's kind of a strange thing to look at yourself on a screen all day long. And so I really appreciate when I get a chance to talk to somebody or even just message somebody. It really feels great. So have a beautiful holiday. Um, we have lots coming for the next year. I'm super excited for some ideas that are coming to me um, in my quiet time, and I can't wait to share them with you. So have a beautiful rest of your day. Stretch extra, drink lots of water, and know that you make a difference in my life. Have a great one. I'll see you soon.